Lenovo's ThinkPad series has a loyal fan base, and mostly for good reason. The laptops usually offer reliable performance, excellent keyboards, and long-lasting batteries that make them great, well-rounded machines. The company also improved its displays lately and attempted to refresh its classic, almost staid design to keep the ThinkPads looking modern while maintaining a distinct look. The X1 Nano is Lenovo's lightest ThinkPad yet, and it's one of the company's first to meet Intel's Evo certification for compact, lightweight, and powerful laptops. For $1399, the Nano offers a 16x10 display, a physical webcam shutter, and a new 11th gen Intel processor. But really, the most outstanding feature is that it weighs less than 2 pounds. The question here then is, did Lenovo have to sacrifice anything to make the Nano so light? On the surface, at least, it doesn't seem as if Lenovo had to cut corners on build quality. The Nano looks nearly identical to the X1 Carbon that I reviewed in 2019 and feels nearly as light. But of course, I'm not a weighing scale, in case you weren't aware. According to Lenovo, though, the X1 Carbon 2019 is 2.4 pounds, while the Nano comes in at 1.99 pounds. Meanwhile, the latest Dell XPS 13 measures 2.64 pounds, while the MacBook Air M1 and the latest HP Spectre X360 13 both weigh 2.8 pounds. Even Samsung's super thin Galaxy Book Flex is heavier at 2.54 pounds. Despite being so light, the Nano is surprisingly sturdy and exhibited little flex, making it easy to hold and use with one hand as I walked around my apartment multitasking. Like all ThinkPads, this machine meets military spec standards for durability, so it can survive some rough handling. I also like the matte finish here, which is clean looking for now, although based on the X1 Carbon that I've had around for almost two years, this won't remain pristine forever. There are two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 slots and a headphone jack on the left edge and a power button on the right. That's it. If you need more connections, you'll want to invest in a dongle. I do wish Lenovo had placed the power button on the keyboard deck where it would be easier to access, but that's a small gripe. What the Nano does have on its keyboard deck is a small fingerprint sensor next to the trackpad, which offers an alternative biometric login in addition to face recognition above the display. I like that Lenovo included a physical shutter for the webcam here too. None of these biometric login options, by the way, are new to the ThinkPad series. It's just nice to know that the company didn't sacrifice any of these things to make the Nano lighter. One thing that is new with the Nano is its 16 by 10 aspect ratio. That means that its 13 inch display is taller than older ThinkPads and lets you see more at once. I love it. Honestly, all laptops should go 16 by 10. You can see more emails, spreadsheet rows, tweets, or memes on your screen at once. It's just better. It's worth noting though that Lenovo is somewhat late to this, since Dell and Apple have used this aspect ratio for a while now. HP's latest Spectre X360 13 is still stuck on 16 by 9 though. Aside from the display dimensions, the Nano's panel is decent. This is a 2K screen that supports Dolby Vision for richer colors and tops out at 450 nits of brightness. It is an improvement over the X1 Carbon, which was dim and lackluster, but not as sumptuous as the Galaxy Book Flex's QLED screen. It's worth pointing out too that this Nano doesn't have a touch screen because, you know, it's a clamshell laptop. Lenovo equipped the Nano with a Dolby Atmos speaker system and four 360 degree microphones. This is meant to make it easier for your contacts to hear other people in your room if needed, and you can use Lenovo's specialized software to optimize for that scenario. Although none of my coworkers noticed a big difference in how I sounded on our calls, I did find the speakers surprisingly loud. As usual with most laptops, the Nano's audio lacked bass and sounded somewhat hollow. But this is a category-wide issue and not a problem with just this device. The Nano also has a new presence detection feature that will wake the laptop up when it believes you're in front of it to make it quicker for you to unlock and get back to work. This uses an ultra-wideband radar sensor with a 60-degree field of view and it generally worked well. Companies like HP have offered this feature in their devices before, but from my testing, the Nano's implementation is so far the most consistent and easiest to use. I didn't have to turn any settings on, and anytime I walked away and returned to my desk, the screen lit up to welcome me. Something that typically sets ThinkPads apart from other laptops is their keyboards. And on this front, the Nano delivers. As expected, the buttons here are well-spaced and cushy with deep travel and satisfying feedback. 
I'm not a fan of the pointing stick in the middle, but it was easy enough to disable. I also wish Lenovo switched the position of the function and control keys on the bottom left to put control at the very end, since that's what I'm used to on most Windows keyboards. But that is how MacBooks are set up, so some people might prefer it. Though keyboards are among Lenovo's strengths, the company's trackpads have been less impressive. They're generally not as responsive as Microsoft's, Dell's, or even Samsung's, and the X1 Nano is similarly sluggish. It felt like the cursor was dragging a little as I swiped about on the touchpad. This is not a major issue since the trackpad works fine and you can use multi-finger gestures for shortcuts well too. But it would be nice to see Lenovo improve this in future machines. As expected, the X1 Nano is a capable laptop that kept up with my usual workflow of too many Chrome tabs and various messaging and photo editing apps in the background. I also managed to take down an enemy team on League of Legends with no lag. It's nice to see that Lenovo didn't have to sacrifice performance in exchange for the Nano's lightweight, and the 11th gen Intel Core i7 chipset with 16 gigs of RAM here kept things running smoothly. Throughout the workday, the Nano's battery level declined slowly, leading me to expect that it would last pretty long. But once I started playing some videos and a round of League of Legends, battery life tanked. On our video rundown test, the Nano's result of 9 hours and 2 minutes is shorter than most ultra portables we've tested. It barely even meets the criteria for Intel's Evo program, which says that qualifying laptops must last at least 9 hours. But that's based on a full HD screen. Though the Nano's runtime was disappointing, I was pleasantly surprised at how quickly it recharged. Lenovo says its rapid charge technology will get you to 80% of juice in an hour, which is in line with my experience. For a laptop that's so light, the X1 Nano is impressively capable. Lenovo sacrificed surprisingly little to make the lightest ThinkPad yet, and even managed to improve its display and speakers. Sure, battery life is a big trade-off, but if you were looking for something to throw in your book bag that wouldn't make it too heavy, and you don't need something that lasts all day, the ThinkPad X1 Nano is worth considering. Just know that at $1399, you have quite a few other options from Samsung, Apple, and Dell that might be better. For our reviews of all the laptops from those brands and other gadgets like smartphones and wearables, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching.